Hi guys, <clears throat> it is another gray, cloudy, gloomy, depressing day here in the end times in paradise in uh, Garfield, Texas, where I am now going on day five without having an interaction with another human being, well, except for the sales clerk at the liquor store three days ago. So anyway, I'm just going to sit here with my little dog talking to my imaginary friends and uh, what I do every Saturday morning, this being Saturday morning, March 24th, 2018, and that's to bring you my clueless moron roundup rant, where I simply open up the pages of the mainstream media to bring you more evidence that this planet's collective IQ is going directly down the toilet uh, here as spring springs in 2018 and good god uh, it was so hard I was having a hard time thinking about which story to lead off with there were so many to choose from obviously I cannot talk about uh, the story from Sac Uh, so since I can't talk about that story without getting a, uh, a content strike for being a racist, let's just uh, go down there to Sydney, Australia to my yearly little nod to the, these goddamn, in some ways, the most pathetic, clueless fucking morons on the planet. And that's these little goddamn mainstream limp dick little greeny environmentalist actually celebrating something called Earth Hour. Every year I do a full rant. I somehow I'm I, this is going to be my rant on Earth Hour. Uh, Sydney goes dark as global Earth Hour climate campaign kicks off. Yes, the Sydney Opera House and Harbor Bridge went dark for an hour Saturday, kicking off a global campaign that will see landmark buildings around the world dim their lights to raise awareness about the impacts of climate change. Earth Hour, which started in Australia in 2007, is being observed by millions of clueless fucking morons in 187 countries who are turning off their lights at 8.30 p.m. local time in what the clueless fucking moron organizers describe as the world's, quote, largest grassroots movement for climate change. Yes, uh, anyway, as I say, I, I'm not just going to go into my, in, in, into my yearly rant about Earth Hour, the, the, the single biggest slap in the face to Gaia uh, the, the, of, of any that we've come up with. It, why don't we just take Mother Earth's face and, uh, and rub it into Donald Trump's shit-smeared asshole? Anyway, I said I wasn't going to do this. Let's go over right next to that story. Let's get back to reality from this outfit here on, on the mainstream media today. Peak oil news and message boards exploring hydrocarbon depletion. All right, and uh, many versions of this story. I just like the fact that it came out on peak oil news and message boards. The absolute no shit Sherlock uh, story. <coughs> Global oil demand in 2017 grew fastest in a decade. Global oil demand rose by one and a half million barrels per day, 
in 2017, growing at 1.6%, more than twice the average annual growth rate seen in a decade, the good old International Energy Agency said in its latest report. Uh, and take a wild guess that more than 60% of the growth in oil demand came from Asia with China and India being the biggest demand centers. Imagine that and how the world's <coughs> first and second biggest population countries on the planet are the world's number one and number two biggest oil demanders on the planet. There you go. Um, let's see. One of the main drivers of growth was the transport sector, otherwise known as the gas-sucking car and truck sector. Vehicle ownership levels increased in 2017 as did the share of sports utility vehicles, as did the share of SUVs and other large vehicles. Natural gas demand also clocked a 3% growth <coughs> last year, significantly above the average growth of 1.5%. <coughs> and of course, although not mentioned in this story, but mentioned in several others that coal demand <coughs> was up last year. Now, this next headline, uh, <coughs> the next two headlines, if, if I had to sum up the state of clueless moronity in the morona scene, uh, you, you have to look no further than a theater in Zombie Island, where many versions of this story, clueless fucking moron dies after reclining movie theater seat closes on his head. And obviously, why do you think this clueless fucking moron uh, had his head in his seat. A man in Birmingham, England died after he got his head trapped in a reclining movie theater seat while searching the floor for his cell phone. The victim was watching a movie uh, at Birmingham Star City cinema complex when he dropped his phone between two of the theater's luxury gold class reclining seats. When the man bent down to retrieve his dropped cell phone, his reclining seats electric footrest reportedly clamped down on his head trapping him beneath it. Frantic moviegoers attempting to rescue the clueless fucking moron eventually broke the footrest to free him, but the stress of the incident sent the man into cardiac arrest and he later died. But uh, I don't know if this, uh, if, if this next story belongs in a clueless moron rant or finally, thank God, a sign of some intelligent life. Coming nowhere more surprising than the state of Utah. Many versions of this story as well. <clears throat> I wonder if Alex Jones covered this story last night. Controversial free-range parenting is now legal in Utah. Hmm. The state of Utah has legalized a controversial child-rearing method called free-range parenting. 
On Friday, Governor Gary Herbert signed <coughs> a bill that would allow children the freedom to walk to and from school to wait in in park cars while their parents run errands in a store, for example, and visit playgrounds solo. There you go. This was Utah Senator Lincoln Fillmore who sponsored the bill. Quote, I feel strongly about the issue because we have become so over the top when protecting our children that we are refusing to let them learn the lessons of self-reliance and problem solving that they will need to be successful as adults. Thank you. I'm assuming he's a Republican senator from Utah since I don't think there are any Democrats in Utah. Hambone Little Tail cheering on <coughs> a Utah senator. Okay, as outlined in the bill, the following situations would not qualify as neglect. <coughs> Traveling to and from school or recreational facilities by walking, running, or biking. Playing outside or sitting in a car unattended <coughs> provided provided the child is at least nine years old. <coughs> so I guess you can still be arrested <coughs> in Utah if your eight-year-old uh, child is found walking to school. I was, I was thinking about this story. When I was eight years old, I remember my, myself and my brothers uh, and uh, my friends, uh, we what we used to do. See the the, the train track was actually made one of the uh, borders of my yard, and uh, w with my mother sitting uh, probably just out of sight. I admit what what we would do is when the train came by, we would jump on the train. This is probably starting when I was about seven. Uh, we would grab onto the moving train, which was picking up speed, and it, and it passed the 7-Eleven about a half mile uh, from the house. And it was chugging along pretty well. And then, of course, it was, it was letting go of the moving train uh, at the 7-Eleven. I do remember Andy Beatty uh, did break his arm. Uh, one time, but such are the perils of growing up. But anyway, thank you, the state of Utah, for showing some common sense. But we're going to go from the state of Utah to the planet Mercury. Mercury is entering retrograde again. This is why so many people care. Well, basically, I will just sum up the story for Time Magazine. This, they, they had a polite way of saying this. The reason that anybody cares whether or not planet Mercury is in retrograde or not anybody who would care about that is one of the most uh, the most pathetic examples of clueless fucking morons ever born. To sum up this Time Magazine story, why so many people care about Mercury going into retrograde when they have no interest in the fact that their own planet is going into a fucking brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. They are much more concerned that planet Mercury is going retrograde than their own planet is going down the fucking toilet. But anyway, good news 
for Clueless. Uh, for Clueless, fucking morons here with no sense of <coughs> irony. Apparently, eight crystals that will help you through Mercury retrograde, missed trains, miscommunications, passive aggressive emails, deleted hard drives. It must be time for Mercury retrograde. Yes. <sighs> Anyway, guys, uh, let's move on from the planet Mercury back to our own planet. Let's go over there to the South China Sea for our update. U.S. Navy ship sails near disputed artificial island in the Pacific to challenge China's maritime claims. A, new, a U.S. Navy destroyer sailed within 12 miles of a disputed artificial island claimed by China in the South China Sea. Yes. Uh, if you do not know why that story is in this rant, I don't have time to go into it now. <clears throat> now let's just come back to our own country. Thank you, the New York Times, for pointing this out. American adults just keep getting fatter. I don't know why they're limiting this to adults, because I'm sure American children just keep getting fatter. <clears throat> and I don't know why they're picking on the U.S. because of outside of sub-Saharan Africa, adults and children. How about earthlings just keep getting fatter? American adults continue to put on the pounds. New data show that nearly 40% of them were obese in uh, 2015 and 2016, a sharp increase from a decade earlier, federal health officials reported Friday. <clears throat> the prevalence of severe obesity in American adults is also rising, heightening their risk of developing heart disease, diabetes, and various cancers. Yes. As 7.7% of American adults were severely obese. And that was the latest figures two years ago. I assure you that figure, figure <coughs> has risen. But uh, as I say, if there's one place we don't have to worry about obesity, it would be in sub-Saharan Africa. So let's go over to the shithole country of Uganda, where we see the headline, 10 Ugandan foreign aid workers held for stealing refugee rations. One more reason to not send foreign aid, food aid, to sub-Saharan Africa. Ugandan police said Friday, they had arrested 10 officials working at a camp housing refugees, mainly from neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo, for stealing food aid. Yes, they had been caught stealing cornmeal and cooking oil meant for the refugees. Mm -hmm. And then selling it on the black market. There you go. Um, let's see, from that shithole country to back to our own shithole country, many versions of this story about this clueless uh, moron 
I would show you a picture of the of this woman, but once again, I would be uh, get a content strike for being a racist by showing you the picture of this 20-year-old mother who has been arrested on felony child endangerment charges after posting this hilarious Facebook photo uh, of her giving marijuana uh, to her one-year-old baby. And the kid uh, obviously uh, enjoying every bit of, of uh, puffing on this marijuana cigarette, which they refer to as a blunt. Uh, and cooing with happiness. And mom is now in jail. Okay. Well, guys, we can thank HuffPost for coming to the rescue with this news you can use. It is so difficult anymore to find news you can actually use, but the clueless morons at HuffPost taking care of their readers with this headline, How to Cook a Pre-Cooked Ham. How to Cook a Pre-Cooked Ham. Hmm. The pre-cooked hams are technically safe to heat to eat as is without even heating them up generally all you have to do is this cut the ham <coughs> free from the package yes yeah, so you do want to take your pre-cooked ham out of the package before eating it uh, I, I have to admit, I, I have a pre-cooked ham in my refrigerator right now, and thank God I had the HuffPost to, to remind me to take the pre-cooked ham out of the package before sticking it in my mouth. Okay, moving on from HuffPost to whoever this is. KTRK in good old Houston, Texas, asking the question, did NASA's Opportunity rover photograph an alien skeleton on Mars? Unfortunately, my computer has, has uh, eaten this uh, photo from NASA that these that these uh, conspiracy wackos are running all over the the internet uh, in, in, in what it is as I say unfortunately the photo got eaten it, it's a it's a pile of rocks that looks like any other pile of rocks on the surface of Mars now making all the rounds that uh, the living proof uh, that there are aliens uh, on Mars, but I guess if there are aliens on Mars, they're too fucking stupid to bury their dead. Uh, then, of course, many, uh, alongside that story, many versions, it was a lead-off story on Coast to Coast AM that it is 100% finally official that that little alien skeleton that they found down there in Peru several years ago is in fact a human but you better believe uh, even coast to coast saying give it up uh, you clueless fucking moron alien UFO people they are not dropping it that that skeleton from Peru is a fucking alien I am so goddamn glad I, I got out of that UFO space alien rabbit hole. But from the planet Mars and the country of Peru back to uh, an update from Pennsylvania. 
Groundhog Puxatawney Phil wanted for deception after spring fails to arrive. <laughs> yes. Puxatawney Phil on a wanted poster. Well, I guess he should move to Texas. Uh, spring has certainly arrived here in Texas. What is going on uh, here in the world of the sports car enthusiast? Mid-engined Corvette could get Cadillac's new V-Sport Bit Bureau V8. <clears throat> we just learned yesterday about Cadillac's amped up CT6 sedan in V-Sport guise packing an impressive 550 horsepower from an all-new 4.2 liter bi-turbo V8. That should make for a lively motivator in Cadillac's flagship, but when we read the press release, there was a sense of deja vu. The engine is all new, but we could swear we'd heard something about a 4.2 liter V8 before. We have in rumors about the much anticipated mid-engine Chevy Corvette. <clears throat> Back in November, we were tipped off to a document from IHS Market that referenced both the Corvette and a 4.2 liter V8, among other engines. Wow! Specifically, it pointed to a 4.2 liter V8 production in limited quantities beginning in 2019 for a car that should be the mid-engine VET. And now we have confirmed a 4.2 liter mill in the General Motors stable. Interesting. Mm. Let's see. From Detroit to Venezuela, Miss Venezuela pageant suspended amid cash for sex scandal. The Miss Venezuela beauty pageant has been suspended and an internal investigation launched after its contestants accused each other of receiving money from businessmen and government officials in exchange for sexual favors. A formal investigation was launched by organizers following a vitriolic social media spat that saw former participants accusing each other of inappropriate behavior. Yes, in a confused flurry of social media posts this month, a group of, of women insinuated that other beauty queens had sought to enrich themselves through romantic, romantic relationships with corrupt businessmen and officials. Imagine that. But uh, we're going to wrap up <clears throat> this week's Clueless Moron Roundup rant with a uh, story about some clueless fucking moron that this old clueless fucking moron is proud to say he has never heard of. I have no fucking clue who the hell they are talking about. But several stories on this to close out this rant. Everyone calm down. Everyone just calm down about Chris Evans' mustache for a second. Yes! Sancho, would you calm down what people do with their own faces is their own decision, you guys. Yes! This is the New York Times ran an interview with Chris Evans on Thursday, the piece touched on a lot of things, 
including Chris's love of tap dancing. But such points have to be set aside as the limelight has been thrown onto one very specific element of the New York Times interview. Hello, would you like to meet Chris Evans' new mustache? Yep, yep, yep. The New York Times <clears throat> introducing us to Chris Evans' mustache. And we wonder why we are so fucked. But I need to wrap up this, uh, this rant because I want to make sure every one of my light bulbs is uh, alive and well in my house. So tonight at 8.30, I can turn on every fucking light in my house to celebrate Earth Hour. And, and guys, I, I just want to make, if, if anyone, if anybody in, uh, in Humpty Dumpty Tribe is planning to turn off their lights at 8.30 tonight for an hour to celebrate Earth Hour, would you please just do me the favor of getting the fuck out of Humpty Dumpty Tribe? Just, just, just leave quietly. Uh, you, you are you you are so pathetically clueless that you are beyond reach. There is nothing that I can say to you to to probe the depths uh, of of your of your unreachable cluelessness. Uh, you are an embarrassment to the eco Nazi movement. Uh, I, 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 I wish you well, but I, I'm, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do to help you. You are beyond help. <sighs> We're so fucked. Bye, guys.